I suppose in much larger countries, you know, the problem is always delayed. You can always afford to sprawl. But in Singapore, we have very hard trade-offs. Uh, we have 8,000 people per square kilometer. We want housing to be, to be livable. We want healthcare. People desire more education. We want to conserve our biodiversity within the city, not outside the city. We can't conserve anything outside the city because outside the city is another person's country, right? <laughs> so everything is magnified and, and intense, much more intense than much larger countries with many cities, lots of hinterland. And so when it comes to infrastructure, we have, of course, legislative framework, but ultimately balancing the needs of today's generation and tomorrow's generation and telling them that, yes, we have to control eligibility for certain facilities and access to, to housing because we need to keep some land for people not yet born, who can't vote, who can't speak up, keeping optionalities for them. Hmm. I met one of my predecessors uh, my, in, my, in my department and he said, you know, when we cleared this land, we were tempted to just build housing because there was need, but we bit the bullet, we kept it vacant for your generation. Please make good use of it and touch it only if you need to. Mm. And I'm reminded of what Peter Foster said yesterday at dinner. He quoted this uh, quote that we do not inherit this earth from our ancestors. We merely borrow it from our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is our karma, that is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it means making difficult decisions, whether it's land use and land use versus housing, land use versus conservation, land use versus healthcare, uh, making people upset sometimes because it is in the interest of some other group or another generation not yet born. Mm -hmm.